Hey, my name is Jack Bauman, and I chose to present on guinea worm disease, also called dracunculiasis. So, dracunculiasis is caused by Dracunculus metanensis, which is the guinea worm. The guinea worm is a nematode from the Animalia kingdom. It primarily infects mammals, mostly dogs and humans. Um, although a November 2016 study found that it naturally infects frogs as well, which could prove problematic for um, the eradication efforts underway. So here's the life cycle of of the uh, guinea worm. It starts as uh, larvae in water that's ingested by co copiopods, like uh, from the uh, cyclops family. And so it's ingested with new drink water, and it goes into your stomach, and the copiopods that the uh, that the worm is inside will disintegrate in your stomach, and then the worms will go through your intestinal wall, and ma uh, the male and female will mate, and the male will die off, and the female will stay in your body for around a year and um, grow larger and larger. Eventually, um, when it's time for the, the worm to exit your body, it'll um, cause a blister, and then exit through the blister, as you can see here. Um, it emerges from the blister, and um, this is very painful, and so people frequently put their feet or whatever extremity, generally a lower extremity that the blister occurs on, into cool, cool water, and the worm will escape and release uh, hundreds of thousands of larvae, up to hundreds of thousands of larvae into the water, which will be consumed by the cyclopses. And once again, those will be within your drinking water. Sometimes um, animals and or like fish and frogs will consume them, aquatic animals, and if an, uh, humans or dogs eat uncooked fish with uh, these infected cyclopses in them then they can also it can also be transmitted that way. So here we have on the top left here is the guinea worm. It's got the spiral in it. This is the cyclops it's carried in. As you can see here, there's a little cy the guinea worm in the cyclops. Um, here's it emerging. Uh, pe health workers will wrap it around a stick to get it to come out. And uh, yeah. So some, the trademark sign or symptom of guinea worm disease is that blister, as you can see in the bottom left here. Um, it takes up to a year for these symptoms to manifest themselves. It generally occurs on your lower extremities, like a foot, for example. Um, the As the worm exits, it causes uh, lots of swelling and uh, burning pain. Uh, Accompanied with the blister can be a slight fever, rash, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or dizziness. And because uh, the worm exits through a um, blister, it leaves an, an open wound behind, and that can cause secondary bacterial infections like um, cellulitis, boils, sepsis, joint infections, and tetanus. Um, also, if the worm is removed improperly and breaks, um, leaving one half in the body and one half out of the body, it will, uh, the half that remains in your body will cause cellulitis underneath the skin. The pain and other complications like other bacterial infections frequently lead to disability. Um, on average, that disability is for eight and a half weeks, but can sometimes be permanent. Um, overall, it has a low death rate, but the complications are pretty major. So treatment is pretty simple. There's no drug or anything to treat it directly, but um, it's all a matter of procedure. So first, the first step of the procedure is you stick your foot or wherever the uh, worm is emerging from into a bucket of water, 
um, that will encourage the worm to leave. It is thought that um, the worm will sense the change in temperature in the water and try to exit through the blister at that time. Um, you're going to want to clean the wound and then gently pull on the worm um, until you feel resistance. Um, don't want to pull past the resistance in case the worm breaks. Um, you, people, the health workers will uh, wrap it around a stick to keep tension on it so that it'll continually be pulled out and uh, it won't be able to go back into the body. And then um, just apply topical antibiotics and bandage the infected areas as seen there. So these are, this is a daily procedure. It can occur, um, treatment can take weeks for the worm to finally leave your body. Um, so these steps will be repeated on a daily basis just to make sure um, it comes out properly and the uh, worm is disposed of and won't be, the water for example, won't contaminate other uh, sources of drinking water. So there's no drug or vaccine to prevent kidney worm disease. It's mostly just a matter of drinking clean water. So because people frequently stick their feet in the water to ease the pain a little bit, um, the worm can uh, spread through water pretty easily. So uh, you just need to make sure people are drinking out of safe water sources like isolated wells or moving flowing streams, um, water that's filtered with a, a fine mesh filter or through a pipe filter. So a bit of history about the disease. Um, it's named after an area of Central Africa on the west coast called Guinea and it dates back all the way to ancient Egypt. There is uh, forensic evidence of a Egyptian pharaoh that had Guinea worm disease. It's mentioned in the Old Testament as a fiery serpent. It was discovered in, 19, in 1870 that the Cyclops was the intermediate host, and then in 1905 the whole life cycle was put together. Um, in 1981, the World Health Organization and the Centers for Disease Control announced the beginning of their eradication, eradication campaign, and uh, the Carter Center closely followed them and now spearhead the, the uh, campaign. Um, today, guinea worm disease is, uh, only occurs in the poorest parts of the world because they just don't have the access to drinking water that the rest of the world does. Um, it's caused by poverty and also causes poverty because um, the people that are affected by it frequently um, get uh, the disabilities and can't tend to their crops. Um, so. Before the eradication efforts started, the disease caused millions of dollars just based on those disabilities. Here's a, a chart of the incidents. And when the eradication campaign started, um, there were estimated 3.5 million cases, 35,000, 36,000 observed in 1980. Um, today we have that number down to 21 this year and 30 last year spread across three countries, Chad and uh, South Sudan. There was one case in Angola this year, It was, uh, which hasn't seen a case before. Um, it was an isolated case, and uh, the World Health Organization believes they have uh, contained it. So, as I said, only Ch Chad and South Sudan and uh, have the disease localized. It's the 21 human cases and uh, are spread across 18 villages. There's also around 300 um, cases in dogs that are being tracked as well. Um, and then 187 UN member states have been certified free of the disease. Mostly just countries in uh, Central Africa that have uh, yet to be certified. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.